Hi everyone, welcome back to Metanoia. My name is Carrie Jane. Today's vlog is going to be about my writing process, and I am making this video for the few of you who are interested in my writing. I'm writing a book called Metanoia, and for there's at least one of you <laughs> that I know is also a writer, and there's probably more of you out there who are writers or just like to write in general or like to be creative in general. So I'm making this video for you guys. And I also <laughs> want to apologize for the very strange artificial lighting that I have today. It's, uh, it's 9 a.m. on a very, very dark December morning and like the camera wasn't even registering my face so i had to like put this massive light on just to like for you to see me it looks like i could be filming at like 10 p.m but i promise you it's like in the middle of the day it's just so dark out on december morning sometimes but anyway i digress overall in this video i'm just going to be sharing with you my writing process uh, my preferred working time and environment and my plan for 2021. And if there are any creatives or writers out there, I would love for you to share your preferences, what you like, what you don't like, on just anything that you have to share, maybe even tips or advice. I would love anything uh, that you could recommend or just, you know, any, any input that you have. But basically, uh, <laughs> to start off, okay, my writing process. Uh, a lot of communities I follow have the question, do you like to write on paper or do you like to write on your laptop? And for me, it's always been a hybrid. The first thing I do, especially like if I'm, um, I, you know, I'm like not available to be at my computer or even with a journal at the time or I'm just trying to get going, I simply write nonsense on throwaway paper. I have so many pads, I have so many like, you know, to do sticky things. Like I'll just like write anything down <laughs> on throwaway paper. And then the next thing I'll do is I'll try to organize that and make sense of it on a journal. And I, I love my journals. I brought some of them here to share with you for those of you who are into journals. This is like a little, thin book that I think I would take to maybe like a writing conference or something. Uh, it says, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you have imagined. Yeah. And then I have this beautiful wave. I got this such a long time ago. I got these, all of these journals like a long time ago and I just haven't had the opportunity to use them yet. They're just too pretty to write anything in and I really like this journal because it has lined and then a blank space so I, I really like that combination and then this guy's this guy's really pretty I like how wide it is it's just stunning I'm afraid to write in it it's too pretty to write in but if, one of these days yeah but anyway so usually I start with throwaway paper and then I try to like like I said organize it piece it together into a coherent thought and then transcribe that into the journal. And then <laughs> typically I will translate this onto my laptop eventually. I use the Scrivener app. It's a great way to basically just have many different things going on at the same time in one compressed project. And you can organize it any way that you want. So it's in my opinion much better than just having like you know word microsoft word or whatever and maybe there's some other apps now that are just as good i don't know i've just been using scrivener for so long now and it's like perfect for the way my mind works i use this hybrid because i need like the connection you know like a lot of us who like to write on paper with the the hand and my pen and the paper to like get in the creative flow and then the the journal and especially the laptop part is like the synthesizing step for me it's like where i get to make something that is more coherent and hopefully lacking less plot holes and hopefully just having less errors in general i think it's it's a great method for me because it gets it to like the best possible place before editing, if that makes any sense, you know? Everything undergoes many edits, but like, it, it, I find that it gets it to 
the best place that it could be. So that's when I go back <laughs> eventually to edits. It's like, I don't want to just throw it out in the trash, which I think is is what happens to a lot of writers. You know, uh, they just get to a place where they feel like a little bit helpless uh, because it's just, it's not coming out. And I think it just needs a little bit more of, of like a premeditation, you know, like their ideas and their thoughts and their words and the way they're translating all of that it just needs a little bit more synthesis. And I, I th this is how this works for me. When I get into a flow, hopefully that is the goal, then I'll go away from the journal and just write on my laptop for as long as I can. Hopefully if I have the time for like days or weeks at a time then i can just go back to where i left off and my mind can easily get back to there probably if you're writing something like a memoir or something nonfiction, you won't really need this because there's not like a very deep level of immersion you know it's your life it's something that's real <laughs> so like you'll probably be able to go back to your project and you know just write whatever sorry for the squeaky toy uh, but like when you're writing fiction, especially for me in first person point of view, it's like you, you have to like get in the zone much more than, than you would writing a memoir. It's, it's not, it, it, it's, I don't know how to explain it right now, but it's, it's just the level of immersion that it takes to write fiction. I find I need this like process to like, get in that flow and, and try to stay there as long as possible. My preferred working time and environment <laughs> is anytime inspiration hits, which is usually never, but when it does, it hits me like a train and I can't ignore it. Uh, I wrote here on, upon like re really reflecting on like when I tend to write, when I, I seem to be able to be in the, the right uh, mindset and everything to write. It's usually not in the early morning. I usually, even though I'm an early riser, like my brain is just not in that level <laughs> of thinking, you know, and creating uh, until later in the day. So typically between like 1 and 7 p.m. I think is my sweet spot. However, there have been many times that I'm literally woken up in the middle of the night with an idea or a sentence or anything at all for the book. In fact, that's how Metanoia came to be. That's how uh, I started with the idea. It was literally like I kept seeing this movie playing in my head and it was keeping me awake. And I had to get up at like 2 a.m., immediately find a journal, and I just wrote and wrote and wrote and for hours. So that, <laughs> that's an, what we call a download in spirituality. But I'm sure other writers and creatives have an actual word for that, a different word for that. Uh, where, where do I like to write? I write best when I'm in transit. So needless to say, no writing got done. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the only reason why no writing got done uh, in 2020. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I like, I like just something about my body moving forward is what allows me to have my mind move forward to like work through something. And I think, and you know, you've never been like listening to music and looking out a window and watching the world go by. I'm sure a lot of writers feel that way. And there's some options for that you know you could take like a train somewhere you could uh, you know, take anything somewhere bus or what have you um, and of course public transit is not really <laughs> an option right now another thing that i find that helps me write is just having a lot of windows and i live in a basement so this also doesn't help me <laughs> uh just you know feeling like stuck feeling like the walls are closing in on me like is 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 a thing that i experience when i'm like trying to be expansive and like do a thing other than just the normal everyday stuff and like life is just like that in every way we're very stationary in every way 
we live in homes and we are tied to the job and the family and the money and the obligations as a five life path I've come here to try to liberate myself from that the best way I can with the very little uh, resources that I have to do that so you know I there are times where I'm very much able to work through that to work around it and there's times that I simply cannot for reasons that are beyond my control and I just let that happen there is the saying learn to rest not quit and that applies to a lot of us trying to do something other than just make money and die okay and this is why this video is not just for writers this is for anyone trying to do anything honestly learn to rest not quit you know it does, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, there's going to be a lot of writers coming after me for this or whatever. But I really feel like it, it does take a very specific environment for every person to be able to flourish, you know, to be able to to do a thing that they're meant to do. And a lot of us don't have that. It's very depleting this life in many ways. It's It takes from us emotionally. We typically struggle with finances, so physically and mentally too, when we have to work day in and day out. There's only so much that this computer up here can do and we gotta do it for our own survival. So like, I get it. And there's things that you can at least try to support yourself to make time for yourself but it's only going to get you to a certain certain level of of anything of of writing of what have you and just accept that it's going to be okay learn to rest not quit good things take a lot of time for this reason because we're trying to do something very different than everyone else okay so yeah i prefer a, a space with like lots of windows i i don't have that and when i'm in a, alone in a large space so like right now this is a pretty good place for me to write everyone is out everyone's gone um there's a lot of nice south facing windows over here which if it wasn't december <laughs> would normally have a lot of sunlight coming through or just light in general and uh that is the time like i find that if I if I am in a good place, it's it's now. It's like you know, 9 a.m. right now. Everyone is gone. Even though it's a little bit early for my brain to be doing a thing, I can still do it and later edit it and refine it and feel connected. You know, that's that's why it's so hard for me to write when I'm like indoors without a window or not in transit, etc. It's because what I'm trying to connect to when I when I do something like like metanoia, which is like an endeavor, I need to like reach out to something that is very hard to hear beyond the noise. And there's a reason why people go on writing retreats, but like those people, sorry, they often have a lot of money, they often have a lot of support or what have you, and you could risk it all and spend all your life savings on not working for a year or two and just traveling, but I know metanoia and it's not going to be that successful, so that would be really putting me in a lot of debt and a lot of incredible difficulties that I don't want to do. So here I am living at home, not in a, in a supportive environment, unfortunately, but you know, it's, it's, you do what you have to do until you do what you can and learn to rest, not quit. And I'm sorry I said that a thousand times, but I feel like that's what all of us need to kind of do sometimes at one at one point or another. So you can see why writing <laughs> has been nearly impossible to do for me for these this past year, basically, and beyond that. And it's because of this that I've constructed a plan for 2021. Will it be sabotaged? Maybe, but that doesn't mean I should not make a plan. My first goal for 2021 starting in January is that I'm going to spend at least two weekends just writing, just dedicating to writing and then when I take a break, whatever fun thing that I want to do in between writing, whether it's like getting Chipotle or watching a movie or calling a friend or what have you, just enjoying myself, you know, I'm going to be in my five personal year which is kind of a time to be selfish with your time. It's a time of liberation and freedom. And next year, 
it's not going to be like that. I'm going to have to be pretty selfless with my time, whether it's a fam familial obligation or I start a new job somewhere or whatever responsibility I find myself in. I know I can see it that I've worked very hard this past year. It's time to switch gears and I'm going to be a little bit more selfish with my time. Unfortunately, this does mean less videos, so I'll probably only be putting out at least one video a month, but I'm going to try to make it a very relevant video every month. It will be uh, you know, probably on just the global month number and the year that we're in a time-based video. I will consider participating in NaNoWriMo in November. I don't know, I'm sure, <laughs> think we're gonna have a lot of change next year, so I'm not gonna bank on how I'm gonna feel at that time or what obligation comes up that I just can't participate in NaNoWriMo for. But if I, if I do have a quiet November, I will consider participating in NaNoWriMo, especially for the writing community. Right before the pandemic hit, I had gone on to meet up and found a pretty good local writing group, and then I couldn't go because of COVID. So maybe, maybe NaNoWriMo in November. I will also be looking for jobs in other areas that will allow me to afford at least a one bedroom apartment in the area that is in my field, which in this country and in my field of environmental studies, of fisheries, biology, of conservation, and general humanitarian causes in a world of industry is nearly impossible. And it's hard for everyone, no matter what you work in, because we do not get a living wage and there is no affordable housing no matter where you live. Uh, I make a pretty good salary for, you know, if I was living in Indiana, but guess what? Don't get to take my, my salary to Indiana. Also, because I'm in fisheries, it needs to be anywhere along the coast and that's kind of limiting, but also coastal areas tend to have a little bit of a higher uh, rent rate. So, like I said, I'm just going to look every single week, you know, see what's out there, see what I would be good at, see what I would be passionate in, and try to advance my career at the same time. And if I could get that change of scenery, I think it would help me a lot with my writing as long as I could actually have financial stability so that I could have the freedom to do what I want to do with my time. And it doesn't seem like that's going to be a possible thing to do here in America at this time where we're facing one of the worst recessions, you know, people on bread lines while corporations are just collecting all the dough that we have in the richest country in the world. But that's another video, <laughs> but it is related to me. It's, it is related to this entire obstacle that I have been facing this year of never being able to to have uh, any kind of financial security and therefore being tied to circumstance rather than the environment I know I would flourish in that I would know I would be able to create and finally accomplish metanoia as well as much more as well as much more in my personal life and in my career path overall. So that is my plan that I'm going to start in January, okay? Um, make more time for writing, consider NaNoWriMo, look for jobs in other areas that I can afford <laughs> with that salary uh, to live alone. So that's my plan for 2021. Let me know where you are in your writing. Let me know what your goals are. Uh, yeah, feel free to share any experience you had. I, I think I like went off in a previous vlog, like sometime, I don't know, I feel like it was March and someone commented below like, oh my god, I can completely relate because I was losing my mind. <laughs> I was just like going on a long rant about writing and it was nice to see that like someone could relate to my experience and you know, it's, it's like we can't really control much in our lives right now, but we can at least reach out and not be alone in that experience. So you're not alone in your experience. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all soon. Take care.